This is the new Dacia Sandero, Britain's cheapest new car, but it's just got more expensive as part of some new updates for the car. So what is new and is it still a budget champion? That's what we're telling you in this review. But before we start, if you want to see lots more reviews like this, make sure you subscribe to our channel and go to whatcar.com for a great deal on your next car. So the first Dacia Sandero we had here in the UK was launched about 10 years ago and it was certainly cheap, but it was not particularly good. Even when it was new, it just felt like a very old Renault Clio, which is the car it was based on. The next Sandero, launched back in 2020, was a very different proposition. It had a still mega low starting price of £7,995, but was actually a very good car. Yes, of course, there were other rivals which were ultimately better, but all of them were significantly more expensive. However, the starting price now is just shy of £14,000, which is a price hike of more than 70%. So, is this the end of the Sandero being the best budget car? Well, not exactly. Keep watching until the end for a full breakdown of what the price hike means. For now, what we're going to do is run through everything else that's new with the Sandero. And this won't take particularly long because there isn't a great deal to point out. You can see at the front, you've got a slightly different design for the grille and you've got this new DC type logo for Dacia at the front as well. At the back of the car, the brand name is spelt out and on the steering wheel, but that is pretty much it. All of this applies to the Sandero Stepway as well, which is the slightly more off-road type looking version of this car. And all the cosmetic changes also apply to the other cars in Dacia's lineup as well. There are no changes inside, which means you have the same interior as you had previously with the Sandero. It's difficult to say it's completely amazing in here because, of course, you're still aware that you're in a budget-focused small car. But for the money, like with all other aspects of this car, it's very impressive what Dacia is able to deliver here. So you've got some nice touches like this fabric on the dashboard. You've even got an armrest here, like a Range Rover. But those things only come with range-topping expression trim. If you go for essential trim, then it doesn't look quite so nice as that. You don't have this armrest and you don't even have an infotainment system at all. But if you do go for expression trim, then you get this eight inch touchscreen infotainment system, which by modern infotainment system standards is very simple, but actually pretty effective. So it doesn't have a crazily complicated layout. Its responses are quick enough and you get Apple CarPlay and Android Auto as standard, which is really great. In terms of the quality in here, you know, there are places where it does feel like Britain's cheapest new car, like some of these plastics just feel a bit scratchy and hard, but the actual build quality of it is still really impressive. So, of course, a Mini, a Peugeot 208, they have significantly plusher interiors that feel really, really nice to sit in. This doesn't come close to offering what they offer, but it is so much cheaper and it's still fine. Now, the dimensions of the Sandero haven't changed at all with these updates. So that means it's just as practical as it was before. And really, that means that if you want more space in the back of your family hatchback than what the Sandero offers, you'd have to spend a lot more money than this. Because really, sat in these rear seats, you'd have to be over six foot to have a problem and feel cramped, really. You've got a decent amount of headroom, legroom's very good as well. And again, for the money, it is a very impressive car. Given the size of the car and given the price that you pay, the boot that the Sandero has is extremely good. In fact, it can't be beaten in this class compared to the rivals that it's up against. So in total, you can fit six of these carry-on size suitcases into the boot back here. And you can see it's a very deep, wide, boxy boot that you're given. And the overall capacity is very, very impressive compared to all of the rivals that it's up against. So this is definitely a very practical choice when it comes to the small car class. You do still have quite a big loading lip at the front of the car, so it might make it difficult heaving things out of the boot and getting them in again, but really it's not that bad. And the overall capacity is really what's important. And that, as we said, is fantastic. If you go for the LPG version of the Sandero, then the only difference between this boot and a boot in one of those versions is the fact that you can't get a spare wheel under the boot floor because that's where the fuel tank goes. But in terms of overall capacity, the two boots are the same. But now let's talk about this price hike. So 
the incredibly low 7995 starting price that the Sundera used to have was for the entry level access trim which came with hardly any equipment at all. Now we would never recommend anyone to go for it because it was so basic and Dacia themselves say that less than 1% of Sandero sales were in access trim. So what's happened with these updates is that entry level trim with no equipment has been dropped. So now you've got two trim levels, both of which are actually pretty well equipped. That explains why there is such a huge jump in starting price for the Sandero. Now, there is still a price hike that comes with the facelifted car, spec for spec, but it's just not quite overall as dramatic as the jump in starting price might have you imagine. And this does still remain Britain's cheapest new car. Although, of course, it is a shame it's still more expensive than it used to be. But hold the front page because this isn't actually the outright cheapest new car you can buy in the UK right now. The price hike means that the entry level, most basic version of the Kia Picanto is actually now a few hundred pounds cheaper. But this might not last very long because the Picanto is about to get a facelift of its own. And the other thing to point out is that Dacia has previously said that once the cost of energy, parts and raw materials comes down, the manufacturer will then consider reducing the price of its cars accordingly. So there is a chance it could get cheaper in the future. There's no change to the engines that are on offer in the Sandero. So that means there is still a choice of this TCE90, which is a one litre, three cylinder turbocharged petrol engine, or there's a TCE100 Bifuel, which is the same engine with a little bit more power and the ability to run on LPG. And that brings with it the ability for potentially huge fuel bill savings. And if you want to find out more about what makes the biofuel so interesting, click on the link at the top of the screen. Whichever sand area you go for, it definitely doesn't feel sluggish. Both engines have more than enough low and mid-range shove to feel fairly zippy around town and perfectly adequate on the motorway. Of course, there are faster cars and there are certainly better cars to drive than the Sandero, and there are some more comfortable cars as well. But the fact is, they're all so much more expensive. And it's not like you're making a huge saving by going for the Sandero and getting a terrible driving experience in exchange. Actually, doing long miles in this car is fine. It's not back-breaking, because it's pretty comfortable, really. It's got a soft suspension setup, so it's comfortable. The bump absorption is really impressive actually. So if you go over a pothole or a speed bump, it's not incredibly hard. It doesn't send a huge thwack through the whole car. It absorbs it all really nicely and it remains pretty settled as you go over it as well. The steering is a bit numb. The handling isn't amazing. It doesn't feel particularly agile, but there's still enough grip. And for the sorts of journeys you're gonna be doing in this car, you probably won't have too many complaints. It is a bit noisy in here especially on the motorway, there's quite a lot of road roar, so other more expensive rivals do feel a little bit more refined in that respect. But really, given the price, this is a very, very impressive car. But of course, it's not perfect. And one of the main drawbacks is the two stars out of five crash safety rating it was given from Euro NCAP. Cars like the Honda Jazz and Toyota Yaris are in another league when it comes to overall safety with more sophisticated active safety systems coming as standard. But once again, the point is that yes, other rivals are better on safety, but they're also much more expensive than the Sandero. So if you do want to buy a Sandero, which version should you go for? Well, entry level essential trim is incredibly cheap, but we'd still recommend going for top spec expression because it adds slightly nicer interior materials, rear parking sensors, automatic lights and wipers, keyless entry, and the touchscreen infotainment system. And it's still incredibly good value next to its rivals. As for the engines, all options are good really, but we'd consider going for the bi-fuel option because it can run on LPG and petrol and has big potential for fuel saving costs. So the price is different and so is the badge, but the same brilliant value package remains. If you want a small car and you don't want to spend a lot of money, the Sandero can't be beaten. For more information on it and to get a great deal on your next car, go to whatcar.com. But before you go, subscribe to our channel if you want to see lots more reviews like this. If you've enjoyed this review, then give it a like and tell us in the comments below what you think of the Sandero.